Craig. He's a dude. This is dude. That's Come Greg here, Olsen right here, man. You got, everybody, everybody got a suit. No, no. You look great. Oh, Greg you look fantastic. fantastic. What's up, man? Good to see you. Sit down next to Tommy. Sit down next to Tommy. I'll stand behind you guys. Hey. I, we was just having a moment. I was just wait, I've been waiting for this listen, day to get invited. You listen, got everybody else on. Bro, we, we was just having this moment about content being delivered in a way that for them it's the offstage content. Right. For us, it's like the in locker room content. Totally. Where it's like, bro, if I would have a mic, I say one thing and it's instantly gonna bring out an emotion. Miami Super Bowl. We had the greatest dinner at uh, our, uh, Prime, 112. Prime 112. Yeah. We had the greatest dinner, maybe of all time. That was epic. It was that picture, we looked. We looked bad. We didn't look great. <laughs> but I'll tell you what, man. We had a blast catching up. The boys, yeah. C Mac, GBR, yeah. Luke. Yeah. It was, man. Khalil it was, wasn't there. Khalil wasn't there. He's no. big time. That was the day after I got cut by the Panthers. Or maybe the day I got cut by the Panthers. Marty flew down to Miami. I was down there doing some work. Like, cut me in the afternoon, told me they were releasing me. And I think either that night or the next night, we all went to dinner to celebrate, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, wait, where do you guys draw the line? Between like locker room secrets and podcasting, there's no different now. Re yeah, right. It's and changed our a lot. Our viewer deserves the authenticity of that. Yeah. And now we can. So for for the longest, it's like, Yo, Greg, how did you guys lose? Yeah. And Greg has to ha give a polished answer. Like, yeah. you know what? It's a team effort. You know, we win as a team, we lose as a team. And now it can be like our defense is shit today. Like, no, <laughs> no, we're not no, doing no, that. No, 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 no we're not that. doing He's that. But, but no, we're not doing that. But, but we're not doing that. Now it's no. easier when you're not playing anymore. That. Yeah. 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 When, when you're on the team, Correct. you have to protect the team. You have yeah, to protect yeah. the you guys. You have to protect right. your guys. You have to protect your team. It's always me. I'm the blame. I'm the blame. Why right. we won? Right. We won because right. of him. We won because right. of him. Right? Like yeah, yeah. we lost because yeah. of me. We, we lost because of me. We lost because of me. We won because of him. Right? That's kind of like the rule while you're playing. You got to protect the locker room. Now what you're seeing, right, guys like Cam, myself, guys that are done playing, you always are going to be respectful of the guys, right? This is never a personal attack. Right. It's never an attack on who they are as a person. Mm. But we can judge and give our opinions on performance and expectations and underperformance. So that's the line that I think guys are starting to kind of find their voice and be more comfortable with, and I you think it's fun. You can also watch a game, right, and be like, yeah, they're never going to win with this defense. Yeah, yeah that's, that's fair. Yes, but to, to, support to that, yeah. this is where I can, and a lot of times he can't, or they can't. Yeah. You can't hold nothing over my head no more. Buddy, 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 buddy. That's, I guess it's called fuck you money. Yeah. Where you go, you go, I'm done. Uh, I'm, I'm done. You can't, it's not a brand. It's not an organization. It's not people. It's like, bro, I know too much. And I'm sitting up here telling you and I'm giving you insight and it's not coming from a hatred space. It's just honest, bro. It's like, yeah. bro, you're not that guy that you think that you are. And, I, and the reason why I'm going to tell you that is because blase, blase, blah. Now, for, for Greg, he's the polished person on TV that... There's a line that has to be drawn where it's like, how raw can you get? Yeah. And that's the thing where it's like, in three to five years, will we get the raw? Like, it's, it's, it, it comes in it's cycles. Uh, it comes in cycles, though. You start talking wild shit. That's what we did. When we started doing podcasts 12 years ago, 14 years ago, talking wild shit. Then you make money. You go like, all right, I got deal with Netflix. I got yeah, 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 yeah. You're like, all right, pull it back a little bit. Tommy didn't, but <laughs> I definitely did. And then you get to the place where you go, all right, I'm back. I'm back. And then you watch the cycles. I can't imagine what it's like as a professional athlete to, to read the comments from someone that's never done. Can I ask you this, though? Please. Do you lose yourself? Yes. Because... When you were that raw, hungry person, it's a little different when you're now on world tours. When you buy your first big house, right? That's when you lose yourself. Because mm. you no longer are the fun guy on Instagram. Hey, I'm with my kids, I'm, I'm relatable. All of a sudden you got an acre in Hollywood with a big house, big trees, and you start measuring yourself. Mm. That is what fucked it up for me because I'm, I put my life out there entirely. And, and Tom and I will talk about this. We started flying on private jets, we're buying Rolexes, and you want to share it with your fans and go like, yo, 
This we're, is what's we're blowing happening. up. This yeah. is real. This is real. Tommy explains this better than me, but our enthusiasm is real. And it becomes a little unrelatable. And then all of a sudden, it's yeah. almost like not fans, it's the haters are going like, yo, measure yourself. Yeah. And you're like, no, man. This is my truth. This is my reality. My reality is is I'm gonna share it with you hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah, but I also feel like there's no like if you're the type of person that I don't care if it's a secretary, a janitor, a CEO, and they go, I got a new car, and you're not happy for that person. Like, you don't go like, what'd you get, bro? No, what you're not happy it? with yourself. That, but that's the that person who goes, that. that's a weird thing. Yeah. I never, I would, I've never been that guy, and I think it's strange. Like, if you were like, yeah. I bought a new car, I'd be like, what'd you get, dude? Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And, and I don't care if somebody goes, I got a Corolla, yeah. or I got a Bentley. I'm like, dude, congratulations. Yeah, that's that's like, I want to see it. Let me see it. Happy for other people's pleasure. How much does that suck? Because, dude, can you just can't let it, you can't let it affect, you can't let other people's decisions impact your approach, right? You gotta say, people live them, they do what they do, and I'm gonna continue to live my deal and I've, I've learned and I'll tell you, you you call a live game for three and a half hours yeah oh there's yeah you're not gonna make everybody happy now of yeah. course right every fan base thinks you hate them everybody thinks that you're you know the refs hate them you hate them they won in spite of you I'm like I had nothing to do with the game I wasn't yeah. you know but you, you have to make sure if you're true to yourself and you're confident in what you do and your voice and your what, how you live and what our world it's just going to get worse right yeah. everyone has a mic everyone has a twitter everyone has a way to express their feelings they're searching for attention and you can't let other people's issues take you down with them that's yeah. i've tried to come to grips with that yeah now, what is it what does it feel like and i'm just curious yeah. tom and i had we've had moments in this business and we've blown up and we're in a good place but when we watch younger dudes come up it's interesting because you watch younger dudes blow up in front of you and you guys are forced to watch that mm-hmm. like new quarterbacks new offensive linemen new tailbacks where you go like Christian McCaffrey we're like well he's blown up I was there one time um, how does that feel what does that feel like can you celebrate them or is there a party that's like it's coming for you I give I give I give you an example to that point that you're talking about but I'm, I'm gonna give you a Christian McCaffrey uh, situation I talked to Mama Matt yesterday right and I'm most excited for him to win a Super Bowl because you know how Christian works like he's one of those he's He's one of those guys that it's like, bro, you're a little obsessive. Like, he's doing spider monkey things. He's yeah. working on, like, you know, breathing exercises. He's next level with treatment and therapy. And it's like. Since he was a child. No, like, I heard the IV story. Yeah, yeah. He like, goes to high 14. school. Yeah, that yeah, was a little. That. That's that was Papa a, Mac being like that, crazy. Yeah, he's like, no. wear jeans because it makes your legs heavy. That was incredible. No way. That's so good. That's the. That, it's so C Mac though. It's so it, C-Mac. Oh my I God. love it though. It, it's perfectly on brand. <laughs> but but this is the truth. There was a time. I think it was. When did my when I uh, my foot? Was that 2018? That was, you. you when, hurt when, your did footing? Lovey, when did Lovey go in? Uh, 2019. 2019 season. My lens frank was fucked. Right. So it's the bone you in your preseason. And then you played week one, and it, then I wasn't right. You right. I wasn't right. I, I knew yeah. I wasn't right, but I still tried to wheel through. Long story short, the team had success with the with my backup, in essence, with Kyle Allen, Lovey Dovey, and I wanted to be there and be the best teammate that I possibly can, so that he knows as a young player to get the support from the older guy. I didn't want him to feel like I was being disgruntled. I didn't want him to feel the pressure, like damn, like I'm winning, but. Cam don't like me and it's, there, yeah. it's this awkward energy. I refuse for that to be the narrative. So much so that Lovey was was not, I think he was scooting to the facility. We had a rookie dinner. Rookie dinner is like where the rookies kind of cater to the older guys. Yeah. After that, he got an Uber there. I don't know how he got there. He came into my Ferrari. That was one of those things that it was like, yo, this is real life. He's like, bro, I'm the starter and I'm in the passenger seat of Cam Newton's Ferrari. And I remember having that conversation and I'm like, yo, bro, like this league is a business. And one day you're on top of the world and the next day the world can be on top of you. Enjoy it. I didn't know how true, I thought I was talking to him, but I was really talking to me. Yeah. You try to make me cry? Yeah, and let me add one thing to that, right? So us in the locker room, right, for years, I mean, I, no one's on record more than me about what Cam's impact was on our team and me and all that, that's, uh, that's obvious. The challenge in the locker room is, okay, we have this young kid now who's taken over for Cam. We, he's going to be out for an extended period of time. Yeah. The balance in the locker room now, every question is, we win a game. Can Kyle Allen continue to be the quarterback? Do we need Cam yeah. Newton? Do yeah. we need, 
right? But now the question is, like, your loyalties to Cam never change. Yeah. But if you stand there in the locker room and just say, no, we need Cam back tomorrow, man, I need What Cam does back. it do to Cal? I'm Kyle Allen. I'm like, well, I know I'm not Cam Newton, but, like, we can't shit on this guy, too. Yeah, like, of course. You need to make sure Kyle knows everyone in the locker room has his support, his faith, his yeah. trust. Man, we're behind you, dude. You're doing awesome. But that is not an indictment on the guy who's No, for sure. But that's very hard. But do, do they then that's try to fair, spin that? Does of course. Yeah, like, and then oh, you yeah. say yeah. something, they turn it sideways. No, it always goes. And then you get it, it always, laid in bed on no, a Sunday morning. I, I get it in bed on Twitter right after he says it. I and then Kyle all, Allen's done a great job, man. What a great quarterback. He has a future in this Kyle league. Kyle Allen is and good. And he did a great job. And Cam is futures in question. Remember, yeah. That's the title. Yeah. And they're not mutually exclusive, yeah. right? And I think that's the challenge the locker room faces in the situation like that no. where you have to be and Kyle did a great job Kyle was he won a lot of games and we were like six and two at one point but to say Kyle did a great job is completely separate yeah. from if Cam is Correct. If Cam is back healthy of course he's back but a lot of players are not able to it's manage hard. that emotion and, and they I pick sides I'm literally I remember they had you guys had a game I think y'all played Tampa or y'all y'all went to Houston yep I went to Houston, and it was a play that Kyle Allen made a fucking hell of a play. He spent out of a, a sack yep. from J.J. Uh, uh, Watt, yep. and he made a play. And that was one of those things. I was I was going to church. My father's a preacher. I had went to church that day, and they had a thing where they would watch all the games after church. The awkwardness where it's like, yo, you're rooting for your the Panthers to win, but it's almost like people want to make it like you don't want Kyle to – you want y'all to win, but – you don't want him to have a great game. Yeah, you see yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, you want to keep yeah. it in perspective. But I'm like, I don't care about that. I want them to win because I'm still thinking that when I come back, we're going to the playoffs, right? When he was making the plays, everybody kept looking like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, he's bought like, I mean, he's a, it's not it's not no 189 with a touchdown and an interception. He was having the 275 with three touchdowns and, you know. See, this, what you're saying right now, is what we're talking about that didn't exist a decade ago. For the sure. insight, the conversation we for sure. to hear what it's really like. Now, this makes you as a fan go like, oh, oh shit. yeah. what you think actually can be it's a reality. Right. You guys have these real no conversations. Doubt. I mean, it's, it's it's so hard now, or it's so easy now to, to go direct to consumer, as I would call it, yeah. with the content. And, like, I see this situation. What Greg will bring out of me on, on camera as a person who knows me is something that is like, yo, bro, how can I work with Greg in media? Because this is a guy that's like, bro, we had so many battles together. Oh. Like, when I look at our, our, our armor, it's so bloody. And, oh, my God. Think of it together, that's got to be cool. Yeah. yeah. It's, like, it's we, why we grew it's what up you doing do. stand-up together. I mean, when we were young, we met. Yeah. Our camaraderie. We've just seen each other naked together. I can't No imagine. way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We're we're gonna gonna no way. So we're going to move on. We're going to move on. You can't stay here. No, no, no. You can't stay here. You can't stay here. No, no, no. Get out of here. Get out of here. Get out of here. Get out of here. Tether. Tether with electrodes. No, no. We're not doing that. The part that makes it really cool is when you're when you're connected at the beginning and when we when Cam got drafted number one overall pick. You don't get drafted number one overall pick if you're going to a team that won 14 games the year before. Right, you yeah. won. They won two, one, one two. or two. Right, I got traded there that year. New coach, so we all kind of started this journey trying to climb this Jeremy mountain Shockey. together. Shocky, shocky. So like, when you share oh, yeah. those tough moments, the tough losses, the six and ten, six and eleven seasons, six yeah. and when you share those, it makes standing on the NFC Championship. It makes going to the Super Bowl. It makes breaking records. It makes watching him set NFL records and celebrate. It make no stop. It makes those so no no so no, no stop. But he's modest, right? Not taking nothing away from Travis El Travador. but before he went on this realm of like high thousand yard, like what he's been able to do, he's been able to put up receiver like numbers. Greg was the first. And Greg was the first thousand, three time back to back thousand yard receipt, uh, tight end. And I'm saying to myself, it's like, yo, bro, like, how do you feel when you see that? And had I been healthy, we would have had more. Right? Oh, there's no question. It's about like that. Well, that, remember, I got hurt um, before you did. That's I one got of those, hurt week one of 17. Yeah. Going into for the fourth year, yeah. 17, I broke yeah. my foot first game of the second game of the season, missed six, seven weeks. Yeah. We still made the playoffs, 
That was a, we, that was we a lost to New Orleans. We should have won. Right. But I have a picture of this moment in my office. With after I, we, it was week, it was last game of the season. Cam threw me a little flat route, and I went over a thousand yards. And I had broke my elbow the week before, so I'm in this big ass. Place. The, 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 the peanut tumor. The, the, the I mean, it was like a yeah. knee brace for my elbow because I couldn't hi- I couldn't straighten my arm out. But I wanted to break that fucking record. Yeah. And I have a picture. They, they did a little thing. It was a home game, and I have a picture of me and Cam like yeah, hugging. Yeah. And it was like, sorry, not your hat. I was like, you know, like to share it with a guy who you wouldn't have been able to do it without yeah. is cool and like we had some tough games we had some amazing moments we had personal success yeah. we had personal failure within reason of bad games bad moments like when you share that over nine years yeah. long periods of time with guys man that that's the stuff you remember like those are the memories yeah. that is what makes it so special it's the little things i'm curious as stand-up comics we started in comedy clubs my favorite memory of comedy clubs and i don't want to go back there is on a Sunday. I put on NFL. I had my I had my fantasy teams up. I had all my pickums, and I'd pack my bag. I don't want to go back to this moment in my life, but I'd organize my hotel room on a Sunday. I had one show on a Sunday, and I'd organize my room. And I miss that. I don't want it back, but I miss it. Yeah. What do you miss that you don't want back from the NFL, but you miss? Like Monday morning, you wake up sore as shit, and you go, "I earned that shit." Hell yeah. No. No. I don't. I wish I can go back just to appreciate it more. 2015 Thanksgiving. I, I was literally the next words out of my mouth. Listen, I, when you were done, I was going to tell this. This was my favorite memory. This wraps up everything about what makes it special. Yo. Is the story you're about to tell I'm right now? To this guy. No, no. Check this out. I know what you're going to say. It's 2015. Say granted, the Carolina Panthers is at the epitome. We're at the tip of the spear of sports, not just football we we are transcending that was like they didn't have group celebrations they didn't like the dad was like i was the yeah. the yeah. thing he was the story in the nfl was cam yeah. newton he's dabbing yeah. we're undefeated going At into thanksgiving 2000 2000 we played america's team tony romo and the dallas cowboys we were also undefeated right at the end of that game my my intermediate family best. My mom and my dad was still there. They didn't get their whole, uh, their, they wasn't able to come fly back to Charlotte until the next day. We're on the flight. So to your point where he's like, what could you go back to? Those flight after end of a game is nothing match. We would have like our beatbox and we would have like, you know, they would smuggle, you know, alcohol in, you know, and they, you know, we would have like a time, right? Yeah. And it was simple. It was like, yo, I'm starving. I heard somebody say that. It was Derek Anderson, my backup, but a guy who, they got me. I'm a kid from College Park. I'm a city boy. I'm like one of the gutter motherfuckers that you can't fuck with. But College Park? College Park, bro. Like, real talk. But to be understood by a white person, I, I, that's a whole other story in itself. When he said, bro, I'm starving right now. I was like, bro, it's Thanksgiving. And Greg echoed it. He was like, Kara, the kids aren't here. They were in Dallas too. They They, came to the Everybody was coming the next following day. So the eve of Thanksgiving, I said, yo, y'all come over to my house. Granted, it's 1 a.m. when we like when we land back in Charlotte after beating the Dallas Cowboys. I was like, yo, bro, come with me. I called my auntie, which is my mom's twin. I say, Auntie Gail. Can you warm up some food? Oh, it's already, I'm cooking it now so y'all can come over, boom. And I said, I got some teammates coming. She didn't know who it was. I got Greg uh, Greg Olson and, and, and D, uh, DA, they came over and the joy on their faces when it they was, taste it was amazing. the food. I've never it had was anything like, so good, no offense to my wife. I it was her. like, it was like, yo, like, what the fuck? You know the it was one of those. <laughs> we all know. It yeah, was, yeah, yeah, we, yeah, know. Know. we know, we know. It we was know. the we soul know. food. Yeah. Yeah. But this is the thing though. That's and he may, he may for, forgot this moment. I was so protective of that year that I didn't want to be, dist- I didn't want to, I hated the attention unwanted attention people see my uh, the way i dress and the energy like that's natural that's that's who i am but i didn't want to go into my personal life my girlfriend at the time had came downstairs they were eating this is great i know what you're gonna say i i remember all of this and greg is like crushing 
What the, the juiciest fuck? turkey you've ever had? Stuffing, you name it. It was unbelievable. He's he's eating and he's trying to process like what the fuck seasoning the sta- oh is this yeah. on top of like, hey, that's Cam's girl. Wow, she's pregnant. <laughs> like no, she's pregnant, oh, pregnant. A, like pregnant, pregnant. Like what the fuck, What's Cam? Like why on? haven't you been telling me this? And that moment. It's like Thanksgiving is happening, and I was like, bro, bro, uh, having a, having yeah, a baby. we're having a baby. <laughs> and that whole, it was awesome. that time was something that it's like, if I could pause, and if I can just tell myself, Cam, enjoy this, because when you think about your journey in the NFL, you're going to miss not the celebrations, not the dabs. It's these stories that you're going to tell. Yep. Cara, yep. Tate, no like doubt. little Cheeks, you know, My like son, the twins. TJ, we still call him, Cam, like, Tate, Cam used to call him Cheeks when he was little. He had these little like chubby these, cheeks. Now he's 11 and he's 5'3". <laughs> he's you know like a grown I mean? man. These things, that's what you miss most. Those stories when you guys are like up and coming and you you're excited because he gets a break and he's excited because you get to you get a break. I see Greg and when I'm I seen Greg and Kara. I don't think I think y'all were just married. I seen him build his family. You see what I'm saying? Like they seen Cam from the Bachelor to like yo bro like Chosen's here. Like he we still have that rocking chair by the, by the way. Auburn one? Like, bro, yes. So we, we made him a we made him a rocker. <laughs> like for our these, like we have real emotions, and that ability to go direct to consumer. Yeah, it's awesome. To yeah. tell people those stories. Our story is me and him driving to the Bray Improv, and he goes, "You know, you burp a lot." <laughs> and I went, really? And he goes, "You burped like 15 times." <laughs> I didn't realize I had acid reflux. <laughs> so that's our story. There you go. <laughs> hey, happy Thanksgiving, man. Hey, 2 a.m. Thanksgiving at Cam's at Cam's house made by his aunt is an experience every person in the world, yeah. especially white people, should experience. Yeah. Because yeah. you're, it was life-changing. It was I, I called my wife, I was like, I, I don't know what I just ate. Yeah. A lot of the things I had never heard of or seen before. Turkey legs. It was it, not I, turkey. It was, it, it it was No, it didn't even taste tur- like turkey. It, it, was, it was not. Turkey legs. I don't know what it was, but yeah. it didn't taste like things that I had grown up eating, and it was a life-changing moment. Mm. That's awesome, dude. It Fellas, awesome. man, this has been yeah, this is, everything a, I wanted it to be. Bro, you got to realize vibe. we watch you all the time. Yeah, yeah. this, this is, we got to oh, definitely. Thank you, thank you, no, thank you. Listen, this is amazing. How long are y'all here? Uh, uh, we have a show tomorrow night at the MGM Grand Garden Arena. If you want to come out, please come out, both of you. We I got, leave tomorrow right. night. We leave Sunday. We leave tonight. Sunday. Leave tomorrow night. So that means tonight. We got to burn fucking Vegas. <laughs> hey, we got a pump, pass, and kick contest we're doing at the MGM Garden Arena at 6 o'clock. o'clock. Six o'clock. No, yeah. listen. Listen. Stop in. Throw a fucking Las ball Vegas, a Nevada. This is the thing, like, I live. You think I give it's a damn best. about you jumping and telling me I got time to go? Like, this look, the best. I don't give a fuck. Like, buddy, buddy, buddy. Listen <laughs> me a lot. Are you out of your fucking mind? Listen, you're fucking up at six right that. now, bro. I'm Bird Chrysler. I'll ruin all the shows. Yeah, <laughs> this is the thing. We need this, this continent. We need the session. Yes. And and to learn, I I. I feel like a Vegas commercial where it's like, you guys are at the crap table and you guys would go, oh my God, you guys yeah. celebrated. Oh, yeah. And it's like, yes, yes. all right, bro. All right, cool. Hey, it's nice to meet you. What you say your name? Bert? All right, all right, cool. All right, cool. what's your name? Greg? All right, you guys leave. And it's like, no, bro. Like, we got to just stay in this moment for as long as we can. So I'm definitely linking up with some of you motherfuckers tonight. Love it. Please, please. Vino, cigar, we got to light it. Put it Let's up in the it. air. Let's light it. Awesome. I'll light it right now. Mm. I think I've we're been walking out. To come on this show, bro. I'm just mad Thank I never you, came bro. on Funky Fridays. No, you're coming. No. I need to come on Funky no, Fridays for I can't keep up with all the shows. I can't keep up with all the shows. And I bought my first Mashika hat, Super Bowl in Atlanta. We got a lot of stuff. Oh, you got a Mashika. I got three now. Three Mashika. I got my first one. At, I got my first one at Cam Cigar Bar in Atlanta. I walked. Oh. Dude, it's so good to see you. Thank 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 you